transformation is quickly taking place throughout the Edison School District. It's a change in the style and perception of teaching and learning. And the catalyst of this reformation is the ushering in of the 21st century classroom. Fully equipped with Promethean boards, iPads, and Chromebooks, these technological advancements, along with the proliferation of social media, has begun to change the way educators teach and how students learn. The idea of a more collaborative and communicative style of learning is sweeping the district with positive responses from students, teachers, and parents alike. However, in order to continue and advance this classroom renovation, teachers need to stay informed and be made aware of new technologies, applications, and resources that will continue to enhance the learning experience. This is where the need arises for a collaborative educators conference in order to foster the desire to further integrate technology into the classroom. A few weeks ago, the Edison Professional Development Team hosted a conference at John Adams Middle School titled EdTech NJ. This conference, open to the entire state of New Jersey, allowed teachers to learn from the experiences of their colleagues regarding best practices for technology integration and social media applications in order to improve the learning experience for our students. That is awesome, folks. Don't you agree? Today we have over 100 people with us to explore various technologies, uh, mobile devices, iPads, cell phones, Web 2.0 tools, uh, Google Apps for education, and the like, really to augment student understanding and learning in the classroom. But really, you want to take it to the next level. How could you use the tools to do the same skills, but in a new way? This type of conference style is putting the ownership in the teacher's hand so that we're not waiting for development coming down from some company like Pearson or another group, and we have to wait for it to trickle down to us. It's us taking ownership, and it's letting the edge runners and the edge con cutters you know, share the new technology immediately with um, people who you know, are interested but not, might not be sure. So by having it be local, you know, you're trusting your neighbor to help you out with this, and it just builds a whole better experience for all of us. This, this conference format is absolutely paramount for educator success. Uh, you have an opportunity to really connect with all kinds of educators from all walks, ranging from, you know, teachers all the way to superintendents, uh, offering various insight, ranging from how technology implementation has changed the game, all the way down to offering, you know, free applications on how to use Common Core. I'm going to go ahead and toggle that browser on again. I think it's enhancing our teaching, so it's just another added resource, uh, like our tools in our toolkit. So you're always going to need the teacher in the classroom presenting the content, being the, you know, uh, providing the knowledge and supporting the kids. But another avenue for the students is having these the technology resources in there. Pedagogy is pedagogy, but what we feel technology is doing is really flattening the world. And so it's allowing easier access to information. It's allowing kids to be able to share information and publish not only for the bulletin board outside their classroom, but also now for the world. A lot of the behaviors that a teacher typically does in a classroom is changing. I'm not writing on a whiteboard today. I'm Instead, I'm using uh, a smart board or a Promethean board. I see both dichotomies with um, response to technology. I see them, those that are like me who just jump in head first. I see others who are testing the waters and maybe putting a toe in and maybe dipping back out. I think as more people show how valid and useful and authentic technology is um, and how safe it is, that you'll see a lot more people come on board, um, that you'll see the movement spread. At first, a lot of people are, are very afraid of technology because they don't know how to use the technology. And one of the problems that we've had in classrooms is that educators uh, don't know how to use certain apps and they don't know how to use certain computer programs. And kids are coming in with their cell phones, texting a mile a minute and using all kinds of different apps. It's almost a sense of overwhelming for, for an educator. So at this point, I think a lot of school districts are trying to educate the educator on the different varieties of technology so everyone could kind of be on the same playing field. The game has changed. It's different now. So yeah, you're gonna have kids who go in and take pictures of their notes. It's gonna happen and you should let it happen. It's okay. It's demonstrating the transfer of knowledge.
the, the students are loving that the teachers are embracing all this technology now because even if a teacher stumbles upon something and, and needs support, the students are right there to jump in and they want to show how much they learn, how it, much they understand how to use it. It's also reciprocal too, so for so long the teacher's been the person with the knowledge and it's always been the mindset, well, the teacher's going to teach the student. Well, now with technology, there's so much out there that it's almost impossible to be an expert on it all. And so it's reciprocal in the sense that, yeah, well, the teacher will share some ideas, te technologically speaking, with the kids, but the kids also bring ideas and they teach the teacher. And so it really creates this great atmosphere in the classroom. Student performance is uh, certainly rising with the use of educational technology because students are much more engaged. You know, when you put a Chromebook in front of them and load up a Google Doc and you have 12 people collaborating on the same document at once, uh, it's, it's, it's circulating around the idea that everybody can work on this together. They could do it at their own pace. They could do things and research in a whole different style and fashion. Because today, information is instantaneous and it's, it's necessary that we compete on the same type of scale to keep that student involved. So I have seen a dramatic increase in student performance. Um, I teach all levels from honors on down to basic. And as a matter of fact, this year, one of my students who has been always disaffected, troublemaker, uh, in one of my general level classes, he comes to class every day with his phone, and instead of getting in trouble for texting in class, he's using and learning his phone, using his phone for educational purposes. And I have not had one single behavior problem with this kid. He has been engaged, he's been participating. I tell his parents that, and they're like, well, I don't, you know, who, my son? Like, yeah, it's amazing. What were some positive things he did? Acts, right, so that was one of our expanded vocabulary. So acts are things that they did as president. So what kind of acts did he do as president? Against the sale of the con contaminated food and drugs. I can see the classrooms more as a community now, helping, like, there is no lead student, there is no higher student. Everyone is in there supporting one another, teaching one another. Um, just the communication, the collaboration has just grown. Technology has a great way of bridging the divide between grade, grade levels, but also uh, giving kids access to information that perhaps they never had access to before. So why don't you can go to a search up here, right, and search this river or this river. We get less papers, and at home I don't have to f find all my papers to refer back to whatever I've learned. Yeah. yeah. You can just look at the file on my iPad. We are going to use a calendar to help us solve some problems today. So last year, um, two classes in Woodbrook started as a paperless classroom. Um, and now this year it's grown. There's a class at JMP, first grade class. There is a fifth, two fifth grade classes also at Lincoln. So it's becoming successful within it and it, they're just growing. And as teachers, they're meeting together and discussing what's going on in, in the classroom and they're collaborating on different apps and how to use it with the students. And um, by having these classrooms that are paperless, it's just promoting more teacher collaboration, which in the end promotes student success. Today we're going to be researching three things. One is New Jersey geography. We'll be doing that here and doing that over here. We also will be reviewing continents and oceans. That's right here. You guys have your task on your desk. You guys will be over here will be researching parts of a map and your task will be on your desk. You'll be going to Brain Pop, watching a movie. Make sure you have your earbuds. <laughs> and then you'll be doing the quiz. I think it's preparing the students for, for 21st century learning. We're using two apps. Um, one's called Notability, and that's basically our, our notebooks. And we're also using uh, Schoology, which is basically an app where we can, I can communicate with the students daily, and we could do discussions. And it's basically used also for the transfer of work back and forth. You get the homework from Schoology and send it to Notability, like and then... PDF. Yeah, and then when you do note up, and then we when you do your homework, you send it back to Schoology, and Mr. Grill checks it and sends a comment. You can see everybody else's answers, so it's not like copying, but you can learn from them too. It's like a normal discussion, but you're doing it on your computer or iPad. I've also involved the students in literature discussions on Schoology, and basically I post a, a question before they go home, and then they um, kind of um, answer the question. And also they have to answer back to another student also. And some of the discussions have just been like amazing. I don't think I would have gotten that kind of discussion in, in, in class. 
Even the quiet students, the ones who never speak up in class, have such a voice online now. Whether I'm using Edmodo or Today's Meet for back channeling or for a virtual classroom space, uh, I have students that never say a word in class unless I call on them, like helping each other out, uh, providing insightful information, and it's, it's amazing. It really is amazing to see, like, I'm able to reach more kids more often than I was before. The bottom line is kids need to be engaged and they're using their cell phones and their iPods and their iPads and, and everything else out there. They're using this technology. And for years, educators have shunned it as being a distraction to the learning environment. That's no longer the case. We could take these educational tools and we could harness them into appropriate, effective instructional assistance. Instead of reading a book, we could like look at Brain Pop and search it up ourselves. Like you can play games and learn at the same time, so it's fun. And there's like, you don't have to like look everywhere for like a dictionary or book. You could just search it up on Google. It's like a new re resource to use. Education is about learning and doing. Education is not just about some stuff is in my head. Great that it's in my head, who cares? But you want to have it travel from the head down and out and into something that you can hold or use or do something with. So these kind of conferences that give teachers and students options, you know, in um, broadening their educational experience, I think it's absolutely vital and transforming. When everybody sees the benefit of using this technology in classrooms and utilizing different message and embracing every different kind of learner, you have a whole new classroom and you have a whole new kind of school. Education is not the uh, filling of the pail, but instead the lighting of the fire, which I believe is Keats' quote. And so it's more about not simply projecting information onto kids and having them sit passively in a classroom and sort of absorb it. It's now asking them to take that information that they've acquired and do something with it, apply it to the real world, create something, collaborate with others, critically think about how they can take that information and ultimately change the world.